as we set up this match. Jan Merkel is first with Is It Control? Yeah, is a control. We just saw this mirror match. This has been the deck that has really propelled this team here to this position in the Rivals Gauntlet Top 8. And, you know, this is the matchup they brought it for. They were targeting Gruul Adventures, Naya Adventures, Naya Winota. We see four main deck copies of Cinderclasm, perhaps the most effective card in this matchup. A lot of the creatures that Gavin is playing just get wiped by this cheap board wipe spell and then if Jan is able to control the early game use those removal spells to his advantage and keep Gavin's board clear cure a best the sea god is going to come down and it's going to be real tough for Gavin to come back from that all right there's a look at is it control such a powerful and well-built deck versus gruel adventures a deck that has been format defining for almost as long as I can remember here <laughs> take a look at this deck here it can it can offer a beating Monty it, it, it absolutely can. We've seen Gavin, despite everything going against him, he's taken down this matchup before. It was the last match he played in that upper final. He faced Jan Merkel and came out victorious, and it didn't even look that hard. He made it look pretty easy. So Gavin, he, he's on a heater in the matchup, and all he needs is to draw his good cards. He needs to have that Jesper into Magda Curve, and then just play some Haymakers, play a Chariot, play a Gold Span, and you know, the big thing for him isn't what's in his control. It's he needs Jan not to draw those Cinderclasms, not to draw those early cheap removal spells, and Gavin can take this match and qualify for the World Championship. Mani, who are you rooting for here? <sighs> I, I gotta go with Jan. I am a huge fan. I've watched him play over the last year, and he has just been a dominant force. Everybody sings his praises. People still remember his Pro Tour victory from 2003. I'm gonna go with Jan, but either player deserves it. Yeah, Gavin Thompson. Gavin promised to put on the frog onesie if he wins. He didn't, but I'm saying this to make him do it. Uh, so yeah, we've got an absolutely fantastic matchup here for our championship match Jan Merkel versus Gavin Thompson this is it everybody the winner is going to the world championship over to Marshall and Cedric thank you Maria that's right it is time for our qualification match And welcome back, everybody, to coverage here of the Rivals Gauntlet. It is time for coverage of the qualification match. This is the best two out of three matches between Gavin Thompson and Jan Merkel. And by the way, it is worth noting that um, Gavin gets to be on the play here in this opening match. And then if there is a third and deciding match, he will also get to be on the play for that. It's similar how, to how we do games opening up. But it has been made pretty clear that he doesn't like the matchup and he doesn't want to be facing down Jan Merkel with this uh, is it control deck, Cedric. What would you be feeling if you were standing in Gavin's seat here? Are you scared? Yeah. It looks bad. <laughs> it looks really bad. Yeah. Um, Good example right here, by the way. <laughs> yeah, Cinderclasm's in hand. Just drew a copy of Burning Hands. Look, I know that Gavin Thompson got by Jan a little bit earlier in the day. This matchup is... Horrible. It's not as bad as I think Li Shi Chan had it um, okay. with mono green against this, but I, I it, it's it's about on that level. I mean, this is extremely extremely difficult. All of the cards that Jan has in this matchup line up beautifully. You just saw Cinderclasm. Uh, we already talked about Burning Hands. That one's pretty obvious. Disdainful Stroke for more expensive things like a Seekish Chariot is beautiful. There will be times where Drawing Disruption Marshall is going to be able to counter a key card because Aggro decks love to tap out. It's just going to be tough, man. Yeah, it really does look like it. We already saw a nice little well, one and a half for one. We'll call it Cinderclasm clearing away Magda as well as the one one token from Heart's Desire. Now we're going to see these uh, two lovers reunited here. Love Struck Beast and the Heart's Desire token back in action. But <laughs> like it's hard to imagine, right, that this is main deck stuff here from Jan. If you're sitting in Gavin's seat, Burning Hands takes down the Beast. Now we're going to see Rimrock Knight hit the battlefield. <laughs> and there's a Cinderclasm still in hand for Merkel to just take down these two creatures, too. It's like, come on, man. That's pretty brutal. 
Yeah, I mean, you're just kind of sitting here. If you're Gavin, you're just hoping that the answers don't line up correctly, right? You're hoping that, you know, that that Jan doesn't have Cinder Class, and he doesn't have Burning Hands, he doesn't have Disdainful Stroke for Seeker's Chariot, stuff like that. That's all you can really do uh, in a situation like this, because the matchup is so difficult, is you kind of hope that there's some stumbling and fumbling around, draw too many copies of Omen in the Sea, or expressive iteration, and not finding the appropriate answers, maybe flood out on Kiora, best of the Sea God. I mean, it is truly that tough. Gavin, before beating Jan earlier, was already, I think, 0-3 against Is It Control on the weekend. So he already knows it's tough. And he's saying the praises of Jan over the course of the weekend. That's right. He has shown him a lot of respect. By the way, an interesting wrinkle here. Cinder class him to take these down. Uh, Jan decided to wait till combat. He also did not kick it, although it is going to work. There was a snakeskin veil that could disrupt it, but instead he's going to run a Seekus chariot into disdainful stroke or Jwari disruption. And you can see how difficult this road is going to be for Gavin Thompson as he just can't keep anything on the battlefield against what Jan Merkel is bringing to the table here. Now he's going to start re-sculpting the hand. It's going to be expressive iteration here for Jan, who finds, wow, more action. Disdainful stroke, frostbite, bone crusher giant. I'm not going to hit a land off it. I guess that's the that's the good news, if that's you're the, uh, Gavin. That's the good news in quotes. The bad news is that all the spells that were found there are easily castable. So it's not like... It's not like the cards that were found there via iteration were a six mana spell, seven mana spell, seven mana spell. It's like, oh, well, I can't really cast any of these and I don't have the land to bridge the gap. It's like, no, I mean, I didn't find a land, but they're all spells I can play. So take one of them. Go ahead. Wow. Bone Crusher is going to be the one. And the, the toughest thing here, too, Marshall, is that every step of the way, Jan has something to do. If Gavin doesn't deploy anything, Jan can play Omen of the Sea. He can add Uri into his hand. You know, he can, if an Omen of the Sea was on the battlefield, he could use it to scry. He could deploy a Bone Crusher Giant. Like, if Gavin starts missing at any point, Jan's like, oh, perfect. I'll start drawing cards. I'll start sculpting. I'll start casting expressive iteration. I mean, that just shows how difficult this is. And that's a keep keep, by the way, with that Omen of the Sea. <laughs> I mean, this almost looks like it was tailor made to beat this matchup. And uh, it seems like Gavin Thompson, at least in this opening game, is going to have his hands full. Now, this does kind of beg the question, though, right? Because you hear this all the time where people say, well, this is my bad matchup. But then you also hear a lot of people talk about standard and say, well, there aren't any that are that bad, right? Oh, the, yeah. These yep. these strategies aren't so extreme, Right, that you know somebody could have one card that shuts down your whole deck, or something like you can sometimes see in older formats. It, even as bad as it gets here, we've already seen Gavin win a match against Jan today, right? I mean, it can it happen. It can. It absolutely can happen, and that's what Gavin's got to hold on to here. Is he knows he's in a bad matchup, but all you can do in a situation situation like this is you can mulligan well, appropriately you can try to keep you know the best hands possible or give yourself the best chance to win you can play your turns as perfect as you possibly can over the course of the games that are going to be played here and then let the rest kind of sort itself out and if you walk away from the match saying hey i did everything that i possibly could do no mistakes along the way or anything like that and i just couldn't win because the matchup was too bad i think you can rest at night with that so mm -hmm. control the things that you can control in this situation because you can't control that you're in a bad matchup. That's the last thing you can control right now. That's right. Those decisions were made before the tournament started. And Gavin is just going to try to get in for some amount of damage here. He's going to fire up Den of the Bugbear. The Lovestruck Beast won't be able to attack. The Sentinel can. And then if he can get in with the Bugbear, that'll leave him with a 1-1 left over. But it looks like Stomp is going to take care of the Den here. Oh, we got the Snakeskin Veil. Cancel the, that order. That's right. Snakeskin Veil, a little bit of a blowout here. Hey, it's not gonna, bad, at least. It does gonna, generate a 1-1, one, one, and it does get in for 5. And, you know, this to me is exactly illustrative of what you were just talking about, Cedric. This is Gavin doing everything he can. It may not end up winning in the game, but he's giving himself the best shot he can. That is Gavin's first good first good turn of the game. I, yeah, that was the, that was. You know, everything else he's played has gotten destroyed, killed, murdered, two for one, whatever. But you know what? That was his first good turn of the game. Now, does that get to equal another good turn for for him and fans of him and fans of Gruel? I certainly hope so. 
But that was his first good one. Maybe that's a turning point in this game. In the meantime, he's going to see his 1-1 get sniped here by a spike field hazard. There was also a frostbite that went into hand, and he can use that to take down the uh, Den of the Bugbear or even the Yespera Sentinel or something along those lines. Okay, another layer, though. These creature lands, uh, you know, are kind of the last line of offense, if you will, for Gavin is he does tend to lose most of his creatures to the different burn, sw burn spells and sweepers and such that Jan has. If you're just joining us, we're in our opening qualification match here between these two players. They are going to play best two out of three matches. If you see those circles next to their names on the left, when one of those gets filled in, that means that they've won a match. First player to win two matches, well, they're going to go to the world championship. Yes, they are. Okay, so Lair of the Hydra is going to get fired up for just one. And unfortunately for Gavin, it's going to eat a burning hands here. And it looks like Gavin has eyes on perhaps firing up the uh, the den of the bugbear now. I mean, I can, I can appreciate Gavin here so much because, I mean, we are working. Just working hard, hoping the opponent doesn't have the right thing. But Jan's like, obviously, I have the right thing. <laughs> field three. Like, Gavin is working so hard to get, like, any damage across. We're on, like, turn eight right now, I think. Turn seven or eight. Jan's at 14. Oh, God. You know, and now he's found Kiora best the sea god. Like, Gavin, I love it that, like, you know, he knows all, all the little intricacies of his deck and, you know, mana to float, how much activate Lair Force, so you can activate Den of the Bugbear. And Jan over here with, I don't know what he's drinking, some coffee, some wine, some tea, combination of the three, and it's just, <laughs> whatever. That's dead, that's dead, that's dead. I'll be uh, fine. Did, did you see Gavin there? Yeah, oh yeah. He says, no! But he also kind of knew, you know, it was one of those situations. Yeah, you know, it, 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 you're sitting in this match with your Gavin, you're just like, hey, could you just not have it just at least once? Just right. don't have, whatever it is, just do not have that thing, please. And... Miracle has not been cooperating in that way. Now he does get a bone crusher giant stomped and then onto the battlefield, but boom, here's the big answer. It's Kiora best, the sea God with Yorian in hand. I'll add and a forest off the top of the library certainly isn't going to get Gavin Thompson anywhere. Big fat brick wall of a Kraken sitting there on the other side of the battlefield. And there's about to be another one to join it. And we are uh, we are in the end game now, and uh, un unfortunately for Gavin, this is not where he wants to be. Uh, and unlike that fantastic movie, uh, there aren't multiple outcomes here. There's, <laughs> there's one. There's oh, just one. Wow. There it is, Yorian coming down and providing. Really, the hammer blow here, this is going to be another Kraken as well as a bunch of value off of the double Omen of the Sea. Not to mention, you know, there's always that 4-5 flyer that's really relevant as a blocker, too. So this this really is putting the nails in the coffin here in game number one. Gavin's going to take a quick stretch because he knows he needs to gear up for the sideboarded games, which will start, uh, you know, moving our gaze over to how that is going to play out. Because as it stands, this one is in the books. I like it. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Go out I on like your it. own terms, Gavin. I can appreciate that. And there we go. So there's the final damage coming through for Jan. That was a clean end-to-end -end victory for him. Really no doubt at any point that he had that one uh, in hand. Now, they've been talking about the matchup being bad for Gavin. Oftentimes we think about it like, well, you know, game one, it's not great, but maybe in game two, it improves. Is that the case here? Well, Gavin gets to bring in potentially a couple copies of Vox Pagonis, maybe a Phoenix of Ash, Cloythus, sure, Roiling Vortex, potentially another copy of Snakeskin Veil. You know, these are all these are all cards that feel like minor upgrades to me. They don't seem like major overhauls. To me. And if you look at Jan's side of things, he's got Mind Flayers love those um you, you can make an argument for brazen borrower if you want but i mean a, a major upgrade two more copies of burning hands to go along with the two that we saw in game number one okay that's not great 
you know? So uh, a red cat melee, potentially. So Jan is bringing in significantly better cards here than Gavin. So not only does the, not only is the matchup good for Jan, but Jan's bringing in cards that are more impactful than what Gavin's bringing in. And that further cements, Marshall, just how tough this is. Yeah, you know, you kind of got the sense um, for the last round that we, we watched there, Jan, Miracle, and uh, Kai Buda, they're both playing the same list. And it was uh, kind of one of those things where they were going, oh, I want to be the one to have a chance to win this thing because if I can get there, I know I have a really good shot because I have my good matchup, right? Yep. Where they're playing the mirror to head in, and that, of course, is anybody's game based on skill, a little bit of luck in there too, how your draws go, etc. But here you come in with a distinct advantage, and so far Jan has been able to uh, capitalize on that he picks up the first game in impressive fashion now the sideboards are in and let's see how game number two goes here for our opening match and i know in, in these games marshall we put so much of an emphasis on cinderclasm and how how incredibly powerful that card is in this matchup but even something as simple as this is just you know you play a thing i frostbite you play your next thing okay i'll burn hands you play your next thing i'll counter it's like okay well it wasn't cinderclasm and it was still a pain in the butt Exactly. Th th this is the floor that we're seeing here is, okay, I can just one for one with you. And Gavin's deck, look, it doesn't have a lot of ways to get huge amount of card advantage, but it, it can hang, right? It has the creature lands and it has some nice stuff with the adventure cards to get kind of pseudo two for ones built into it. But that's the floor for Jan. Jan can also just straight up two for one, you three for one, you four for one, you depending on how things go. We see mind flayer, by the way, off the top here, that could be relevant. I think right now, Jan is thinking about Shatter Skull smashing for one, probably to kill Magda would be my guess. Obviously, you can make an argument for the 1-1 one, one token as well, um, because mm -hmm. that's beautiful. Alongside Lovestruck Beast, I, I think regardless, he's going to be casting a spell this turn. Of course, he could always add Urina Hand if he'd like to, but he's going to take care of Magda to slow down the treasure generation uh, that Gavin may have been thinking was a good idea. Not the best draw there for Gavin and Snakeskin Veil for this particular turn, but could be good for future turns down the road. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because the Snakeskin Veil is one of the higher leverage cards for Gavin. It, it is the type of card that can mess up the plans from Jan, primarily because, you know, the stuff that he's doing is either damage-based where the counter might matter or or just blank the removal spell or even cards like Mind Flayer, which target. But at the same time, it's kind of all he's got to fight back, and Jan will certainly be aware of it here. See, Gavin hoping for the best here by playing another copy of Lugstruck Beast as opposed to another copy of Heart's Desire, hoping that this 1-1 one, one doesn't die. Uh, it's a little bit of a risky play here. Uh, actually, hang on, I was going to say this it's a risky play in the face of Mind Flayer, but Mind Flayer can't be cast because only a single blue here for Jan. So. No, and Jan has to make a critical decision here that he, he would like to stomp now, and this is mm -hmm. to play around Snakeskin Veil, which Gavin has. That effectively shuts down both of the Lugstruck Beasts, and right now... There's no way for Gavin to get a 1-1 on the battlefield. So those left start beasts are going to be stuck at home for this turn. Yes, they are. Brutal. Now, there's still no second blue mana source here for Jan, and that is starting to get concerning. I mean, that's the sort of thing that uh, Gavin needs to have happen in this game, is Jan needs to miss that second blue source for a while. And Jan needs to draw a lot of double blue cards. That's what needs to happen right now. Mm-hmm. And so far, that is the name of the game. Goldspan Dragon can get nabbed by Disdainful Stroke. And then Jan has to really kind of tap the top of the library here and say, give me some islands, baby, because he's going to need a few of those. If he can, it feels like he can blow this game open. I mean, one island off the top, and he can just slam Kiorbesa Sea God next turn. Yeah, and, and if he does peel an untapped blue source for that Kiorbesa Sea God, it, it's lights out. You, you can call it on yeah. that one. Because uh, there's just no coming back for Gavin against that card, realistically. So, pretty big draw step, and it is Nanul. So, okay. Interesting. This would be a great time if I'm Gavin, maybe draw another copy of Gold's Band Dragon or something huge right now. Yeah, something big would be great, or even just a 1 1 Shatter Skull smashing. That's not it. There is, is Den of the Bugbear here, and that could unlock future attacks if it can get feisty and get into the red zone yeah i mean you can make an argument right now for just den of the bugbear fire it up because i'm gonna get the little bozo left behind i guess eh, that's just okay it's not great yeah it sets up for the next turn and it does apply at least a bit of pressure yana's down to 13 
you know, you have to figure that Jan's got at least two double blue spells in hand. We know Yorian's in there. There's got to be at least another one. And then you have to figure out for yourself what the rest is. In this case, it's actually three. And there it is, there a blue is. source off the top. It is fabled passage. And that's about the most beautiful thing that Jan Merkel could see at this point because it gets him not only to seven mana, but critically that second blue source. And there's Kyorabes, the sea god, with Yorian waiting in the wings as always and Asika's chariot just looks like too little too late here for gavin thompson you know there was a window over the last couple of turns where a card like chariot might have been able to make a difference if yon couldn't find that second blue source in time yep. but as it stands 8-8 into another 8-8 plus the taps plus the fourth five flyer and all that it's just going to be too much here for gavin to overcome it looks like yeah it's just one two punch again of I mean, we have seen Urian team up with sagas o over the course of their lifespan, right? We think of it most with Elspeth Conquer's death. We don't really think of it with your best to see God, but this one two punch has been brutal for our is it control players all weekend long. It's just been a dominant display of being able to generate multiple 8 8 Krakens, being able to lock down permanents, and eventually be able to take things before ending the game right on the spot. And, you know, that den of the bugbear attack, I mean, it makes total sense. The hope there, of course, is that, hey, maybe you trade you trade with the den and I get the 1-1 one, one, and then the Lovestruck Beasts get the opportunity to attack. But, of course, with den of the bugbear, the 1-1 one, one creature is attacking. Jan's going to always block that 1-1 one, one, or at least a, a lot of the time block that 1-1 one, one like he did last turn. So the Lovestruck Beast is never, ever turned on. And then, unfortunately for Gavin, second blue source comes rolling off the top in the form of Fabled Passage. And now Gavin is in this unfamiliar spot of well, i guess it's becoming all too familiar of how the heck do i get through this marshall yeah he's gonna have to hope for some mulligans at the very least coming into the next match here because cedric you and i uh, kind of set the table here this is just a very very tough matchup and it looks like it's going to stay that way yeah it's not going to change very much folks it's not going to change very much at all now it's time to lock him down Yeah, this is just, oh boy, you know, I'm trying to paint a picture of how do you, how do you come back here if you're Gavin, not in this particular game, but just in the matchup, you know, what picture can you paint? What narrative can you weave? I mean, even drawing an Embercleave right now, that, I mean, your creatures are tapped, that doesn't do anything either. It's just, ah. Uh. Extremely brutal here. The Embercleave. Not really going to be able to find a home here, and it's just going to be a quick closeout. Just so, so much to try to overcome. Now here's the attack for lethal. See you later. Brutal. And that's going to be a good game from Gavin brutal. Thompson as we see everything wrapped up here, kind of exactly how we thought it would be.